Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play European Universe Hours for Mayu and Taxes 3.0 with me, Alpha File Mega, and the Osmanli Devlati or the Ottoman Empire. So fair warning, this is gonna be a little bit more of um or an administrative episode rather than conquest because we have a big thing ahead of us and that is a major reform to the way our empire works and that is we want to make clergy pay tax now we can do that uh, we have all the prerequisites um, we have the 100 administrative power and 100 uh, diplomatic power and means that the clergy will start paying 100% extra tax. I'm not sure if it means that they're going to at zero and they will pay 100% from now on, meaning that they will start paying taxes, or if it means... Actually, we can see it here, can't we? Yeah, so based on the free gift, moving uh, lower to... Um, basically diminishing the tax, that means that they should start paying double of what they're paying right now, if I understand it correctly. Either way, they're gonna pay quite a lot more than they do now, and we are going to put them in line with everyone else. However, why I'm saying that this is gonna be a little bit more of an administrative episode, it will be because these major reforms usually majorly screws you over. I expect that we're gonna lose one, two, maybe three points of stability. Uh, we're gonna face a large amount of unrest, uh, possibly some extra revolts, stuff like that. So we really need to prepare for it. We're gonna suck up to the other estates to make our stability um, as high as possible. We're gonna have to save a little bit more money and first of all we need to deal with these impeding revolts. Some of them are gonna be a little bit of an issue already to deal with. Like we have 15,000 uh, Greco separatists which will raise in the area of Crimea. We have some rebel reactionaries here. I'm, I need to see what we can do to deal with that. So without further ado, let's just unpause the game. Uh, the great news is that we actually are getting a huge amount of money, which is amazing. Um, all of the negatives that uh, we had laid on our budget, like the grain and um, tax relief and everything, are now gone. And we've also put down all of our forts. So, you know, generally speaking, we are doing good. I won't lie, I'm a little bit not a little bit, I'm, I'm a lot salty about the fact that uh, the enemy managed to pillage in the um, western part of our empire, the Greece, uh, Ser Greek, Serbian, and uh, even I think part of the Bulgarian territory, but uh, I'm not, I don't remember. Anyway, they, they killed about 40,000 people, which makes me super mad. Uh, in return, however, we gained way more. Uh, we gained the control of uh, the Sea of Azov. We gained um, territory here uh, of uh, the city of Kaffa, which is one of the most developed areas that we have. Oh, that is really nice. Um, so it was worth it. I'm not saying it wasn't. And there really wasn't... Either I would just fight them off constantly in this area, or I just had to suck it up and, you know, accept that some of our territories are going to suffer in exchange for the new ones. But still, it it doesn't feel right. It will family ties. For the past couple of days, we have been entertaining a guest from the Royal Court of Iran. For once, home... Uh, the once home of the Padishah. After a full week of hunting, feasting, and gossiping with the family, Geisha's sister is finally preparing to return to Baghdad. She assures us that she has had a wonderful time and that the royal family simply must come to visit Baghdad soon. With delight in her voice, she says that she'll make certain to inform everybody back home about how the young heir to the empire of Osman Devote is the spitting image of her dear sister Geisha. So our relations with Iran increased by plus 50. We are keen. Improve what's pulling us down. A heretic religion allied to rival. Well, I mean, we're still doing good. Uh, I've put all my diplomats to improve relations with the with allies, with uh, vassals, and with neighboring 
countries or threatening countries threatening countries so we're actually working on that right now because i don't want to deal with that uh recording the new territories which is also good but now yeah the Greco separatists are dropping down ideally we would do the reform when we have almost nobody here when it comes to unrest it i cannot overstate how terrible it is going to be for us if we wait hold on we're paying two extra for that military access aren't we after the war yep okay so you guys chill go back to here and i am going to cancel my military access here if i can um i can because i of course did a mistake here 28 days okay that's fine and I'll send you using ships. Actually, I could have ordered what you... Oh my god. <laughs> That's... What a wonderful management of the army's movement. I could have just sent them up north. You know, they would make it quite far away. Uh, from the capital. And then board the ships. But never mind. Never mind. Okay, we're collecting quite a lot of money from the EGNC, that really is good, and with the, yep, with uh, the capture of Kaffa and these territories, we now have way more naval materials than we had before, actually nearly double, which is amazing. So we can now fully, um, fully support the navy that we have, and I can even envision, right, where is it, oh here, I can even envision having even more. And by envision I mean we can actually do it because we have the naval force limit and I mean let's store a little bit of the naval material so we can then field a couple more ships like two free but for now we're gonna be fine based on our navy tradition so good. So how's the religion looking as well? Chalkidiki has been once again pushed towards... Oh, finally! Finally, they are now fully Sunni. So yet another province has been converted. Which is really good. And it means we've extended the Sunni faith. Uh, so you can go back to dealing with threatening countries. Who are you? Is it Orda Uls? It is. You're working with Orda Uls. That's interesting. I mean, we do have you as a neighbor, but the idea that they would attack us is a little bit ridiculous. The idea that we attack them is way more inviting, but we don't have... I don't think they have even anything remotely good. Circassia is the best one, but it's fully rural area. It is a minor. It's very well garrisoned though. No fort though. Minor center of learning. Chechnya. They, they do have some territories. New disease. Malaria outbreaks. Oh, actually, how did that plague affect us in the south? It's gone, okay. And your guys' autonomy is also kind of dropping, and our corruption is dropping. Okay, we're doing really good. I'm not gonna lie, in the area of uh, in the area of autonomy, we really have very little to complain about, considering the span of our empire and that it's not even 16th century. I'm really happy. It all can be chalked down to the fact that they built the capital. I don't know if this is scripted or if the game has just decided to be extra generous, but giving us the capital um, rank 2 here lowers our... Uh, wait, it increases your centralization by 0 0.06. It gives us prestige. It increases travel time by 15%. Base communication efficiency is improved by 4%. Global communication efficiency is improved by 12%. It costs a lot to maintain, but it is definitely worth it, because it basically means... Uh, do you want to... Yeah, let's expel the foreign traders. I don't care about them at all. 
So the Tiosa is gonna have to be the next one that we're gonna go after. We're going after Fesalia and Constanta. I'm a little bit worried about the religious side though, because we have a large amount of territories that are not converted. And it can be detrimental. Okay, so you guys here can actually... Huh. So we could easily drill you if we wanted to here. Okay, Greco separatists. Where? Kaffa. Okay, let me raise the fort over there. And also in Crimea, just to make sure that in case they raise there, we will be able to move our units quickly. What I'm worried here in regards to the reform is mostly the Orthodox Zealots, because those guys, there's 13,000 of them at this point. And if we do anything with the religion, this could really escalate quite dramatically. Okay, so let's raise you as well. Come on, I raised you as a fort. What are you talking about? You also have a fort. And we have two level 2 forts and a 1 level fort in Crimea. You have no defenses though on the other hand, so that's something that we need to pay an attention to. And uh, nor does you guys. Because there's gonna be definitely another war with uh, Genoa. We're gonna want to take the rest of the territories. And I think what I'm gonna do is uh, next time that we're gonna be facing them, I'm just gonna raise a huge amount of extra troop. I have like a separate secondary army over here consisting of say 15,000 men which are gonna fight them off in the meantime and we're gonna conquer this territory then we're gonna call everyone into the war and maybe go and pillage the bastards because if they can actually move their troops to us it should be possible for us to move our troops to them okay so the forts are raised now let's punish and then greco separatist it's gonna make also the chance that they Race in the upcoming area, yeah, race in Kaffa. It could not have one G. You can lead it, I don't care. Rodos. Because if we suppress them, the actual revolt unrest is gonna go down by 20, I think, which means we should completely remove the provincial unrest from these territories. Okay. Yeah, and Kaffa should now have minus 20. Yeah, unless it's zero, because they raised already. Good. Minus 16.3. Good, good, good. Okay, just defeat them. Okay, so we did. And the Orthodox Zealots, those are. Probably the last one that we're gonna deal with before we deal with the reform itself. Uh, so where are you guys? Oh, this sucks. Gallipo against a heretic bastion. Uh, okay, well, we still need to do that. So let's get you back to Izmit. We need to provoke them, and then we'll deal with the rest. Okay, I'm paying a little bit more for fort maintenance. Okay, let me just drop them again. Let's so save us a little bit of money. Okay, it's no longer as as good as it was before, but we're still doing pretty good. And the fact that the, the Corruption in our empire is dropping, is making me just so happy inside, you cannot imagine. It would be great if we could do something to support you, but I'm not gonna do any of that. Nor will I do any of that. Pardon smugglers. Increases corruption. 
support burger autonomy is hmm. I mean, I would like to do this one, but it screws up our stability, and that's something that we really can't deal with now. Because if we take any hits to stability, it's increasing, so that's the good news. National income is also, I mean, 128. Share of land. Hmm. I'd really like to see them... The corruption around like 20 that would be just we would swim in cash after that can you imagine how much money we would have to do stuff okay cores are at nearly 60 percent that it can oh god that they're gonna be all over the place do we have any forts in these if we don't okay so i'm gonna station my units or my army in Cyprus in expectation of them raising there. Rodos has a fort and what was the other? Dodecanesos? Uh, this one is now called Nisoi Aigayo. Hmm? No, they really are going to raise in Dodecanesos. Where we also don't have anything, not even a fort, nothing, just... Uh, okay, so we'll need to station ourselves over there, because we can... Uh, and we'll send the ships there, because if they raise in Cyprus, we'll have at least a little bit of time to get there. Not much, but we'll be able to get there and suppress them in time before they take over one of those provinces. But we won't have enough time to go to a completely undefended province and take that one down. Okay, we're dealing with Mamluks. Oh, they weren't a valid rival, were they? That's one thing that I didn't deal with. Yep, we're missing a rival. Oh, there they are now, and Bohemia is rivaling us. Castillo doesn't really care about anything. Aggressive expansion. I don't think Mamluks are rivaling Tunis, Yemen, Castillo. Yeah, okay. So why why not, you know, why make them a rival? We can rival Castillo. We're gonna try to be a little bit friendly to our neighbors, especially Sunni neighbors. Okay, can you guys. Just get that last final 5%. I'd like to really trigger you. Uh, but the revolts are looking pretty good. Uh, any other thing that we can do? You're rolling national unrest. Do we have any decrease that we could take that would help? Okay, yeah. So now we can handle them. So, okay, as expected. So we move to Famagusta and we'll suppress them. That removed quite a lot of provincial unrest. The only one left. Siversky, Denis, and Crimea, who are you supporting? It's weird. Krim? Kirim, okay. And Kirim is gonna be an issue in seven years. Uh, I think we can just burn military power and harsh treat them into oblivion. Again, I really don't want to understate how bad the situation can get when you're doing these major reforms, especially ones that make people really mad. But this one is going to be important. Donations, church, finance. Uh, is there anything we can do with the court to make them a little bit more in our favor? 
Um, oh, and the cabinet. No, oh, no. I'm gonna gonna do this one because that one really screws up. National unrest. Donate to the church. Also, won't. I'm not gonna align with you. There's nothing I can do here that wouldn't screw me. Okay, I think we're basically the biggest issue is that we don't have nobility high enough. That is making me nervous, and I'm not gonna pretend like it's not. Uh, but it's still. Okay, Fasale has also been converted. Nope. Okay, Fasale is gonna revert back to Orthodox, but it's very close. So, could you kind of transport the rest of the army so that we can hurt them before they actually start pillaging the area? Come on, game. Come on, game. And we're hemorrhaging money again. It's not making me happy, but I'm gonna have to keep an army probably on high standby and drilling throughout this reform for the next couple of years. Because it is not going to be a beautiful, all sunny shine land. The local bay has been killed. Okay, we're gonna go with a policy of least resistance now and actually do whatever we can to uh, lower remaining resistances everywhere. Because those are gonna be what could screw us over in the next couple of years. Damn, okay, they're actually defending themselves very well in Lafcosia. So we don't really have a very large battle width here. And we're also rolling very poorly, so these casualties are not exactly nice. We're paying quite a lot for reinforcements too. Okay, well let's move you back to here. I'm gonna drop the forts again. Yeah, okay, I dropped them already. And once my army arrives into Constantinople, we are going... Actually, no, you know what? We're gonna do it immediately. There's no point in waiting, because we really can't do anything else. So, we're gonna move from free gift... No, actually, no, I read that wrong. That was the situation right now, and they're gonna start paying taxes. And they would get even less income. Because right now they are at minus 100 tax, so we're gonna exempt them from that, and we're actually gonna force them to pay tax. Okay, this is not gonna be nice, but we have to do it. So, reforms of 1472. Reforming the realm is an M. Our duest task, finding success only through careful diplomacy and the balancing of a variety of interests. Caution must be considered when enacting sweeping changes, and change in itself is a risk the whole realm will have to take. Such risk is most prominently felt by the elites themselves, inherently guarded against change in uncertain times, and always opposing reforms that target their own self-interest. Reform perceived as a directed attack against a given elite will lead to a strong backlash, disloyalty, and even civil war. Even so, sometimes the price of progress must be paid if the realm is to move forward into the future. So we can enact reform, further reform, and back down. So enacting reform. Nobility does not care, burghers do not care. Clergy is furious, views 60 loyalty, views 5 spirituality, and views 60 relation between spiritualists and the state. So basically they hate us to their very core. Clans are indifferent, bureaucrats are indifferent. Views 15 legitimacy, views free stability. Okay, so we drop to minus 2. We get stability increase interval 50% for the next... 10 years and recent from all power cost plus 5%. So basically we're gonna be dropped to minus 2 stability and we'll have to deal with it for the next 10 years and no questions asked. Uh, well, okay. There is no... No change. Courage obligations. 
taxpayers. So, you guys are now moving back. So let's see what the situation of provincial unrest is. It's not good. But it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Uh, yeah, revolts are a bit more persistent now, but the worst one is the reactionary... Reactionary warlord, is that? I think 16k. I think we can handle that. Yeah, the preparation paid off. It's gonna be a mess for a couple of years, but I think we'll be able to do it. Now the stability is where we're gonna have major issues. Global trade power, spy detection, tolerance, legitimacy, global institutions, spread commerce, monthly devastation, national unrest, urban production efficiency, missionary strength, manpower recovery strength, national garrison growth and mandate growth are all dropped. And missionary is unable to actually do stuff. Okay, so the Tilsa will not be converted. But we can go with Thessalia. Bohemia have insulted us. Your mother was a hamster and your father smelled of elderberries. Oh, Monty Python. I love you so much. Okay. I am pretty certain that we're gonna stay at minus two. Yeah. Our stability is actually dropping. Great. At least the corruption is not increasing. That's one light at the end of the tunnel. And please tell me... 16% courage of loyalty. I wonder how much they're gonna be paying though. We're gonna have to check that later on. I'm gonna perform the show of devotion the moment we have the chance. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. You can hit me for all you want. I'll still continue. Local fortification expert discovered. Okay, coastal... The entire country needs him. Oh, he's a bureaucrat. For defense, siege ability. He's a level one bureaucrat. Or Chunkiri gets local fortification. Actually, that's not really bad. I don't think we're gonna use him now, but we could save a lot of money on him eventually. How old are you? 46. If I fire you... I think we're gonna lose 50... Yeah, 25... St okay, so that would mean we drop to minus 3. Uh, so let's put him in reserve, basically. We'll have him there and deal with him as time goes by. We have to carefully monitor the rebels. Okay, Serbian separatists are also at 10k. Reactionary warlords are at 15k. Uh, some of these guys... I mean, they're not as they... I, okay, yeah, I, I'd say it was because we suppressed... Because imagine, like, the reactionary warlord is using... Is, okay, is good out even bigger. Okay, that's, that's fine. That, that guy is never gonna raise. But Serbian separatists are already using places like Velbosht, and I think we had a recent revolt there. So imagine if we had 25 revolt there at this point. Isn't it so? Separatism. Yeah, recent uprising. So without that, they would have 25.9 unrest here. And that would be. That wouldn't be very pleasant. So you guys can drill, because our army needs it. We'll need it in the next conflict whenever it comes. And we'll also need you raised. For now, to make sure that everything is fine. We are improving relations with our vassals. Sarah Romaneska Aratnitz. You're really good with them. So I think this is it. Uh, we'll make it. Okay. That actually means we get even more revolts. And the reactionary warlord now has 80k. And he's gonna raise it in 7.5 years. Can we harsh treat you into non existence? 
See, that's what I meant. Orthodox Zealots are now at 20k. Serbian Separatists at 10k. Uh, it's gonna cost us what? Everything? Investment Manager. You will forgive me for not paying attention to that right now. Uh, so is Kina and Vendigar 7.3 years? Yeah, it's the really only dangerous one. The rest of our armies can handle if with heavy heart. Because the Orthodox Zealots are going to be a pain to deal with. Okay, so you guys record. Kaffa is going to be court next. So that should deal with the 100% autonomy that we have there right now. I have half a mind of building a better port there when we can, because they definitely can pay for it. 20... So, okay, autonomy is not... Okay. It's not recalculated yet, but we can actually check how much it would be to build a better port there. Because they definitely could use it. Though... Let me check. Let me actually check how this is gonna be. Because I think we have a level 2 port in Fyodoro. A level 1 port here. I mean, it would help with the autonomy, but is it gonna. It's gonna give us a little bit of a naval uh, bonus, which of course is worth it in its own right. So Fiona has a level 2. It gives. Embark cost 60%. Uh, yeah, we can actually check it here. That's going to be easier to see. Naval. Damn, it's going to nearly double the amount of fleet limit. Same for residence. Reduce the cost for communication efficiency. Ship building is lowered and ship repair is increased. Yeah, it's actually pretty. I think, yeah, autonomy is down to 92.6 and it should be. Yeah, it's dropping by 1.3 monthly? Really? No, okay, that was that was the wrong one. Current estimated change is plus point eleven. Okay, it's the separatism that's screwing us over. But they have a natural yeah, we need to build a port there. If we can fund it, I'm gonna build it. So build infrastructure, design the project, improve infrastructure, harbridge to rank two, prepare to construct. It's gonna be 103 gold. Yes, I'm paying for that. And the minus three stability. I wanna see if there's a light at the end of the tunnel. There actually is, so stability is gonna increase very soon. Actually, throughout this year. Executive of what is financial national income is tanked. But yeah, look at that, Kuroji started paying taxes. Like everybody else, fees, polls, excises, oh baby, that's what we wanted. They're paying very little, but that's gonna change, the stability is gonna go up and we get richer. So that makes me happy. I mean, you know, the fact that they also have a loyalty of what, 16, 17 is a little bit screwing with that income, but if we can improve the elites. Yes, we can yield concessions of ancient liberties to the nobles, which immediately increased our stability, which tanked the revolts as well. That should also help with our income. Anything else that we can do here to support the elite? No. But we're gonna get other options soon. You got 22. Uh, not curtail. I actually wanted to see if there's anything that we can do. Expanding the bureaucracy is screwing with stability, so we can't really do that right now. Uh, I would really want to promote the bureaucratic faction. We need their influence. 
it helps with stability but it's gonna make everybody else mad so I have to wait right now because with the courage is so low uh, we really can't do it okay so I'm gonna end the episode here it was as I said devoted purely to management of the Empire but still it showed us quite a lot and we've done one of the major things that we wanted to and that is that tax they are now taxpayers I'm gonna have to look if we can eventually increase uh, the subordinate to secular. That's gonna give them a little bit more power from money, but it's gonna lower the autonomy from them. And actually, this one makes everybody angry. That's interesting. And the courtier will be furious. And of course, we also need to have the bureaucracy going up to. What is it? Lose hierarchy? I think it was... No, clear hierarchy. Organized bureaucracy. We need further influence. I mean, we'll get there. We're already at 22. It's a slow process, but we'll get there. So thank you very much for joining me. See you in the next episode.